Hi everyone and welcome back. Okay, so a few of you asked about uh, my clutch pencils, would I make a video about them? Um, so here we go. Now I haven't got as many clutch pencils as I have mechanical pencils, so it shouldn't take too long to get, <laughs> to get through this video. But what I really want to talk about, about clutch pencils, is the benefits of actually using them because I'm tending to sway over now more to using clutch pencils than the wood case pencils and I'll explain a few reasons why but first of all let me just run through what I've got for you here very quickly um, this is the Koinor Versatil 5347 it's got a 0.56 but not sorry not point no not 0. point I'll get it right in a minute 5.6 mil lead in there both of those are Koinor as well, as is that one. That's the Koinor notebook. Um, it's meant to keep in your diary and things like that. I thought it'd be a good one to, um, you know, use with a sketchbook or something like that. It's small, lightweight, and everything. And the other two Koinor pencils there. That one there is the Toisson d'Or, and that one is the Versatil. And they both have different numbers. So that's five nine zero zero. Can't see that. It's glaring in the light. Five two zero one for those that are interested. Another two pencils um, that I very first bought actually, along with the Stedler Technico, Mars Technico there. They were the three clutch pencils that I used on a regular basis. Um, first three that I ever bought. Don't tend to use them too much now, uh, particularly that one because the pocket clip's very low down on that. Uh, it's quite uncomfortable to hold. But apart from that, they are actually very good quality pencils. They're all metal and everything. And both of them have the, I'm sorry, not the eraser, the, um, the sharper knot in the end there. And you just push that over your lead and twist. And that will point your lead up nicely for you. And like I say, all three of those are the same. This one hasn't got a sharpener or anything in there, but I'll come back to this pencil in a minute. Now I've just recently bought six uh, Faber-Castell TK 9400s. Um, 6B, 4B, 2B, B, 2H and HB. And again, I'll come back to those in just a minute because they're the ones I'm tending to use now um, all the time. This one, if you watch my videos, you'd have seen this before. It's a Stedler 925 series. Um, all of these are 0.2mm leads, apart from that one, which is the 5.6mm lead. So these are all um, what they call clutch pencils. You get, uh, like this for example, you click that and it comes out in various increments. So it, that's what's called an incremental clutch. Um, whereas all the others, are what they call a drop clutch you just press the, the top once and everything just slides out so that's why they call that a drop cl clutch this one here as well that's an incremental clutch you just click that and it comes out in various increments but apart from that like I say the rest of them are all what's called a drop clutch so the Stedler is probably the well I think it is actually the most expensive pencil here Certainly the one with all of the features that you need. Um, it says the lead size on there. You've got the lead grade indicator on there. Nice round barrel. Grip is fantastic on there. Pocket clip. Um, oh no, it's the, yeah, you don't get anything with that. It's the, um, the 0.5 version of that that you get the eraser um, with but you're getting pretty much nothing with that one. Right, okay, so, I mean, that's, you know, the poshest pencil there, actually, but it's, like I say, it's the most expensive. And the other two here are the Stedler Mars Technico. This, like I say, this is one of the first ones I bought. This is one of the very old ones. Uh, it's, I, I do like these, actually. They're very comfortable to hold. Light, comfortable, well-balanced, and all the rest of it. Um, and I think it was early last year I bought this one in black, not because it was black, but because they now put the lead indications around the rim of the pocket clip. And I thought, oh, that'll be brilliant. Um, that means, you know, I can buy several of these now and get set up like I have with the Faber-Castell. Because like I say, I've always liked that pencil, even though the plastic's a little bit thin and bendy and everything. I've always found it a really comfortable, nice pencil to use. 
And um, the trouble is though, even though they've put the, the lead grading on there and you just basically turn the pocket clip to match the arrow, I can't really read the lead indications on there. It's kind of very lightly just embossed into the silver and it's so reflective on that round surface that it really is hard to actually see. Um, you know the, the markings on there so I thought well I won't bother buying any more of these because I did actually plan to sort of buy half a dozen of these and have all the pocket clip um, all the pocket clips at different places to indicate the different leads that I'd be using so I decided not to bother buying any more of those um, now this one here looks a bit like a novelty pencil doesn't it it's actually not it's a very nice pencil actually it was sent to me by a friend on Patreon um, and I really like it it's, uh, it's by Oto, Japan. You probably have heard of Oto. They make some very sort of high-end um, mechanical pencils. This model is called the uh, Maruta, and it's a wood barrel, a wood case there. But it's got... Actually, this clicks out in increments as well. I thought this was a drop clutch, but it's not. But it's got a 2mm lead in there. And it's really comfortable and nice to use, believe it or not. And you can actually get, um, when I can get it out, replacement erasers for this as well. And as soon as I hold, held this, I, I just fell in love with it. I thought, that's a really nice pencil. It's light, you know, just it feels like a really nice quality wood case pencil. But yeah, you know, it's got the, the clutch mechanism in there. Uh, it's, I do actually recommend that pencil, I really like it. Now this one, um, although this isn't the 2mm clutch, clutch pencil version of this, uh, the Rotary and Rapid Pro, this is the 0.5. Um, I wanted to add this in here as a recommendation because even though I, I don't own the 2mm version, I'm certainly going to get one because as soon as I held this pencil I thought this feels so right to be a 2mm pencil even though that this one is just the, you know, the 0.5 uh, very fine lead in there. It just feels so much better to be a 2mm pencil, in my opinion. Um, so I wanted to just put that one in there as an option for you. And of course, you know, the Rotary 600 as well, um, that comes in a 2mm clutch pencil version as well. But I do prefer the, uh, the Rotary Rapid Pro. But like I say, that's a 0.5. So what would I recommend then? Um, well, I think it's quite obvious, isn't it, really? I've gone for the, the TK 9400s, Faber-Castell. And I'll tell you why. I just love the fact that there's no pocket clip on them. OK, that kind of means you can't put them in your pocket, carry them around with you, or clip them in a pencil case and keep them safe. I mean, you could certainly put them in a pencil case, a zipper pencil case or something like that and carry them around with you. But I just like them on my desk um, to use them like this. I, I don't know if you can see, I'm quite red there. I've got, I've got some sort of skin issue going on there, sort of dry skin. Um, and I think it's to do with pocket clips, to be honest with you, and holding pencils all day long. Um, I sort of get sore skin just there. Um, so pocket clips can be a real issue for me. So. I really do like these pencils. The taper on them is perfect. And if you watch my mechanical pencils video, when I was talking about the Pentel P200s, I think I said something silly like, um, you know, as soon as you put one of these in your hand, you feel like a, a graphite, a precision graphite Jedi or something like that, I said. I can't remember what it was, something along those lines. Um, and it's the same with these. As, as soon as you put these in your hand, you feel so precise they just feel such a, a precise accurate pencil to use um, that as soon as I put one in my hand I thought yeah these are the ones instantly and as soon as I started drawing with them um, the leads are fantastic as well the Faber-Castell leads um, so as soon as I bought one I thought that's I'm going to buy a range of these these are going to be the ones I'm going to start using now from now on um, now they come in obviously various lead sizes there you can kind of see them printed on the top so you kind of buy the ones that you you know you're going to use the most um, it's kind of a bit funny actually the the system that they've got going um, all of them there have got the lead 
printed on the top you can see that one there but this one hasn't they actually sell a blank one um, so that you can put any lead in there that you like now the trick is with these is not to buy the HB one where it says HB on there buy the blank one because that automatically comes with an HB lead so <laughs> I always know that that's my HB pencil and if ever I need to maybe put a 9B or an 8B lead from another brand or something in there I can just slip the HB out and not worry about it because I've got tons of HB pencils anyway more HB pencils than any other pencil um, so it's no big issue to lose that lead if I have to so that's the trick there you know if you're going to get the HB make sure you get the blank one because it already comes with an HB lead anyway um, and like I say all of the others here have all got the lead indicated on the top there and like I say it's a funny system because these are two mil pencils these four here are all two mil and these two are three mil in fact I think it's three point 15 mil I think something like that but they class them as three mil clutch pencils and the two mil um, leads stop when you get to 4b so everything above 4b you can only get in a wider lead size and the, the pencil itself is a little bit wider if I hold them close I don't know if you can see it's just fractionally thicker than the two mil version so you've got the uh, if I click the leads out a bit there you'll see the leads as well so you've got the three mil on the left there and the two mil on the right and um, I went for the 4b and the 6b because I've only seen 4b 5b and 6b in the three mil versions it, it doesn't appear that you can actually you can actually get an 8b um, but it's like I say that's no problem you can actually just buy the blank version of one of these and put an 8B lead in yourself and at first I thought that was very strange I thought why you know why have they done that why don't they just make it all 2 mil um, it just seems to make sense but then when I started using these I actually you know realized why they'd done it because these softer leads wear down really quick and obviously being softer they'll, they'll break easily as well um, so it just made sense and as I was using them it was really good to have a thicker lead in there and it actually kind of follows suit with wood case pencils as well because when you start getting into the darker B grades um, it, with some of the wood case pencils they up the lead size um, in the wood case pencil you know with the darker leads and you'll probably notice that the lighter H leads sort of HB and everything below that comes basically with a standard 2 mil lead in there and everything darker than that starts to get thicker so it kind of falls in line with the wood case pencils anyway um, so I think that's actually a great idea I really like that so they're super comfortable they're not too expensive either um, I mean if you're made of money or money's no object go for the Stedler you know it's a full metal jacket you've got the adjustable lead indicator there you've got the lead size on top um, clicks out in various inc increments very comfortable the grip is superb faultless can't find fault with that other than my pet hate of pocket clips um, and the price of course and it was the price that put me off you know buying half a dozen of these because these cost around sort of tw you know the 20 pound mark same with the rotarings as well you know the very expensive pencils but these I think I paid somewhere between five and eight pounds each for them um, okay it still doesn't work out to be you know inexpensive when you're buying a great big batch of them and there's still a few more that I want to buy there um, but can you imagine you know, buying six or even ten of these you know at 20 pounds a time it's really going to get expensive isn't it so to me this was a much better option all round even though you know they're featureless there's no eraser in there that doesn't screw off and reveal an eraser or a sharpener or anything they're just a good no nonsense you know old school lead holder clutch pencil um, you know but we do get the the lead indicated on there unfortunately it's not adjustable so you know you, you do have to buy 
each pencil to suit each lead that you'll use. But at that pro at these prices, I don't think that's a problem. Um, it's like I say, they're a good no-nonsense workhorse pencil, in my opinion. And they've been around for years as well, and I don't know why I haven't tried them before. Um, maybe I was into more flashy stuff, I guess, like the Stedlers and the Koinors and things like that. Um, but I, I find these actually to be the best out of all of these. These are, for me, the best clutch pencils to use. Certainly the most comfortable. Now, the other um, clutch pencil here which for me personally is an absolute must um, and that's this one the 5.6 great big thick chunky lead in there fantastic um, you know you can use it on the side to shade areas in quickly um, I mean you don't often see me use this in some of my finished drawings that I do on YouTube but when I'm doing the sketches you'll see this used in I think every single one of them um, this and my sketchbook are almost made for each other, you know, they're a perfect combination. You know, I can use it on the points to get finer lines, use it on the side to shade in areas quickly. And I carry a 2B lead in there, although you can get, um, I've got some here actually, you can get um, all different kinds of leads for these. Which again makes them a really versatile pencil, I mean these are coloured leads, you've got brown, sepia, um, white, I think there's a graphite in there and a charcoal in there and these are all mixed leads and charcoal in here in this one uh, various leads I think we've got what does it say I think it's six B, four B and a two B in there and then we've got a couple of really dark sort of charcoal carbon uh, refills in there and you can buy packs of six of all one lead grade so you can get like a pack of 2b a pack of 4b you know whatever um, you know if you if you l use a lot of them um, great leads actually really good in fact it was actually the Cohen or leads that I used to use in all of my other clutch pencils I always found these to be really nice leads uh, but I've just recently bought um, a couple of the 3mm ones because I haven't got any leads in the 3mm or 3.15mm as they are here and the Faber-Castell, the 4B and the 6B um, because they're going to wear down quick, you know, being a soft lead so I thought, well, I'll get some of these and, um, yeah, and then I'm set up but I really do like these leads so I might actually switch over from the koh or leads to the Faber-Castell leads to use them uh, in the clutch pencils as well but I will stick with the Cohen or leads uh, for this pencil because they are really good and like I say you can get a vast range in all different sorts you can actually get you know proper coloured pencils with them you know reds, blues, yellows all that kind of stuff so you've got a really nice choice there now what I really like about this pencil um, apart from what I've already mentioned it's actually triangle in shape and again it's really really comfortable in the hand it just sits perfectly you know in your thumb and your fingers it's just I just really like it again it's really comfortable nice and thick and chunky and everything and um, it's a great pencil for sketching as well because if like me you use woodless pencils to scrape graphite powder from you know to get various effects in your drawings you've not actually got to take the woodless pencils with you you can just carry that and use that to scrape the uh, the graphite powder from so it's a great um, tool to use when you're outdoor sketching and things like that plus if it's cold you know holding thin metal pencils you know when it's really icy cold outside it's not a very nice experience you know it's it, it's not a nice thing to hold metal you know when it's like minus one or something but something like this when your hands are cold you know it's you're kind of losing the sensitivity in your fingers and everything you can actually sort of hold that quite comfortably because it's just plastic and it's quite thick um, so for me that's that goes everywhere with me when I go sketching that's the first pencil I reach for if I do any outdoor sketching um, I've had that for about 15-20 years as well never let me down absolutely brilliant bit of kit highly recommend getting one of those and that's just a basic um, cheap one as well they're not expensive at all I think they're about five pounds that's all um, you can pay extra and get 
more, more high, high, well, say higher features, just more features like um, pocket clips, erasers, and um, sharpeners, you know, that you pull off and you sharpen your lead with and all that kind of stuff. But I just went for the basic model because that's all I need. Um, and I tend not to sharpen it. I tend to leave it blunt and it's almost self sharpening because I use it on the side a lot to get wider shaded areas and that kind of self sharpens the pencil anyway. So I hardly ever need to sharpen it. Um, and if I did, I could just use a little bit of sandpaper or even your regular sharpeners, pencil sharpeners will work as well on that. So again, it's not an issue at all. And when it comes to sharpening these, um, I use that little thing. I used to use this. This is the uh, the Coom Long Point Sharpener. You've probably got one of these. These have been around for a few years. Very, very popular sharpener. Still use mine. I love it actually. Um, but you've got two sizes of sharpeners, uh, or lead pointers, should I say, on the sides there for a 3mm and a 2mm. So you could use that. Um, I just recently bought this, the Faber Castell. Uh, lead pointer, two holes in there to match both sizes of leads and it holds the graphite powder lovely. So I'm saving the graphite powder now and I'm going to tip it in a little spice bottle or something and actually use it for the drawing. So I'm going to keep saving it up in there and uh, it's perfect, absolutely no waste. Which brings me on nicely to actually talking about the benefits of actually using clutch pencils over wood case pencils and the one I just mentioned there is a really good case in point because you know when you're sharpening a wood case pencil you're getting the wood shavings the graphite and everything all in the sharpening you can't save any of it um, you know so it's kind of a waste really isn't it but you can save every bit of lead you can put every single bit of lead to use from one of these things but one of the reasons I really do like using these pencils now over the wood case pencils it's the fact that I've got that consistent length there. Um, you know, when you're using wood case pencils, you're sharpening them down till they're, you know, an inch, and you're trying to hold that in your hand, and it's, <laughs> you know, it's a bit of a joke, really. And then you have to start putting them in a pencil extender, and everything starts to feel different, you know. But with this, everything always feels the same. And you're not messing around or faffing around with different pencils. Everything always feels the same. Uh, the same length, the same balance, the same pencil in your hand all the time. So it kind of grows with you, you know, and you get so used to it, it just becomes second nature using your pencil. And you're not having to think all the time of, you know, using different pencils with different weights and different lengths and all that kind of stuff. And I found that really beneficial, actually. Um, you know, these pencils have really grown on me in the short time that I've, that I've actually had them. And it was one of the things I noticed very quickly. It was such a luxury just to have that same length, same weight, same feel consistently throughout a drawing. Um, I just thought that was fantastic. Now, one of the other good things about these pencils is as well, um, I don't know if you've seen artists um, using knives to sharpen pencils and they get big long leads, you know, sticking out of the end there, you know, an inch or two of lead and they carefully shave the wood around the lead and the sandpaper, the tip and everything. I can't stand to do that. I lose my focus very quickly in the middle of a drawing. You know, if I've got to stop and get the craft knife out and start sharpening a pencil and then clear all the stuff away and then go back in on the drawing, you know, I've kind of wasted five minutes and my mind is out of the zone. Um, you know, I just like to just stick that in there, give it a quick twist and it's it's job done. Or I've got a battery sharpener for my wood case pencil. I just dunk the wood case pencil in that and it's done within seconds. I can't stand messing around with knife sharpening pencils. Um, now one of the things I thought of, if you're one of those people, I mean I've got nothing against it, you know, I'm not trying to be funny or anything, it's just that I personally don't like it. But if you're one of those people that, you know, you enjoy sharpening your pencils, with a knife and you and you really like that long lead you know and that's why you're sharpening your pencils like that I've always thought why not just do that it's a lot quicker a lot simpler you know you've got that lead length that you want you can adjust it to get it exactly where you want there's no faffing around with knife blades and crumbs everywhere and occasionally breaking the lead with a knife and all this kind of stuff 
just one click of a button and you've got the length of lead there that you want. And that's something I've started doing actually. I've found that, um, you know, instead of using a lead point that is more like a wood case pencil, I've actually started having a bit more lead sticking out of the pencil now. For some reason, I just like working like that. It just, again, it feels more precise. I can see more of the drawing in the area that I'm working at. You know, I've not got, you know, the barrel of the pencil obscuring the view or anything. Um, you know, and I've not had to work hard to get that point. Just click the button and have as much lead sticking out as I want without any knife sharpening going on at all. So to me, that's another benefit um, to actually using them. And another good point as well is, like I mentioned before, the no waste factor. Um, the fact is, you know, you're, you're never going to have to, well, as long as you look after the knives, you're never going to have to, you know, replace one of these things. It's not like, you know, a wood case pencil where each one just gets worn away to nothing. Um, you know, you're not replacing anything all the time. Other than just the lead, obviously, when it wears away. But it's not like you have to keep replacing, you know, wood case barrel pencil each time. So I think in the long run, it's actually going to work out probably cheaper to use these after the initial outlay that is of actually buying them um, because it's like I say there's going to be less waste with the lead anyway because I'm going to be able to save the graphite powder as well so <sighs> there's, there's just so many benefits you know the more you start thinking about it there's just so many benefits to actually using these things and you're not tied to you know using the same lead all the time. If you don't like the Faber-Castell leads but you really love the pencils, you know, you really find them comfortable, you can use Stedler leads in there, you could use Koh-i-Noor leads in there, Rotaring leads, you can choose your favourite lead and have your cho and choose your favourite barrel of pencil to use it in, so you can kind of mix and match and tailor the pencil to your needs and get the, the you know, the perfect pencil. So I'm kind of swaying more now towards um, using clutch pencils over you know, wood case pencils. And maybe that's something, you know, we should all be thinking about. You know, it does seem to um, be more probably environmentally friendly, you know, we're not wasting wood um, and we can save graphite. You know, and all the other benefits that I mentioned about the comfort, you never have to replace them and all that kind of stuff. It just seems to make a lot more sense to me than using wood case pencils. But am I going to stop using wood case pencils? Probably not. Um, I've got a lifetime supply of them. In fact, I've, I've probably got enough wood case pencils to last me 10 lifetimes over. So I am going to still be using them, um, you know, alongside these. Um, again, you, you've got more choice, haven't you? Um, you know, if you use these as well, because some leads you can't get by certain manufacturers. For example, Derwent. You know, if you really like the Derwent leads, um, or the high uni leads or something like that. I think there's other manufacturers that make really good quality pencils as well that don't actually make um, these leads. So you've got to kind of use their wood case pencils if you really like them and you can't find a lead that you like to use with a clutch pencil. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna still use both actually uh, for now, but I'm definitely swaying over to using these a lot more um, in my work. Okay, and as always, I'll put links in the description below. There will be affiliate links, um, you know, to all of the products there. So you can go and take a look and check the prices and everything. So I hope that's been helpful to you. Um, for those of you that asked, um, it's like I say, I haven't got a vast collection there of them at all. But it's not about that really, is it? You know, it's about using them, not collecting them. Oh, actually, talking of collecting them, that's just reminding me there's something else I've got to show you. I'll just have to move these to one side. And it's it's this thing here. I bought this and I didn't know what I'd got actually. Um, it's obvious, it's kind of obvious what it is. It's you know it's the rotaring art pen um, drawing set there. And I used to have a rotaring art pen years ago, but I threw it away because it got blocked up with ink and I didn't have a clue how to clean it out, although I do now. Um, and a couple of years ago I thought I'd like to start using the rotaring art pens again. I really missed my old one so I went on eBay. This set was on there. And so I bought it. It was a, a second hand set, hardly used at all. And um, so I, I bought it purely for the 
art pens and I thought well that's handy having um, a pencil with it as well never seen one of those before and uh, again it's a, a 2mm drop clutch pencil um, I bet there's some of you there now that which are kind of laughing knowing exactly what I'm going to say next um, yeah and I found out that this was actually apparently it's the holy grail of um, clutch pencils apparently um, I was kind of researching these online I thought I've never never seen the art pencil before um, you know do they still make them and apparently the uh, Rotring only made these um, I think it was during the, the late 80s I think or the mid to late 80s something like that and they only made them for about a year or so and then they discontinued them and I really don't know why because that's one of the nicest um, clutch pencils that I've ever used it feels like an old dip pen you know an old way well, it feels like <laughs> the art pens and it's really nicely balanced really comfortable um, really fantastic pencil I wish they'd start making these again because if they did I would certainly buy you know like I've done here I'd certainly buy you know a few more of these because I think they're fantastic um, now I would recommend this but unfortunately you probably won't be able to find one and if you do you're going to have to pay a fortune for it and it's like I say I bought mine by mistake I paid I can't remember what it was like 15 or 20 pounds or something for this entire set obviously the person that was selling it didn't know what it was and the person that bought it me didn't know what it was they put it up on a buy it now um, I just bought it because I wanted the art pens and I didn't have a clue um, and since I found out what this is I've been researching the prices on these and I've seen just the pencil on its own sell on its own for sort of £150 just for the pencil on its own without the art pens the art pens they still make these today these these are not worth anything at all well they are I think they cost like £15-20 new but you can kind of get them £5-10 second hand on eBay that kind of thing there's no sort of collector's value for them uh, as it were but this one apparently um, I've heard it called, like I say, the Holy Grail of uh, clutch pencils. So look out for that. I mean, if you're at a car boot sale or a garage sale or something like that, and you see a set like this, just have a look to see if it's the one with the pencil in it. Because sometimes it comes with a pencil, or it actually comes with three pens. So keep an eye out for that. You might already have one actually, and, and not be aware of what you've got. Um, but again, I'm I'm going to actually start using this. I was scared to use it actually because of the value. Um, but I'm thinking <laughs> what's the point of having it if I don't use it so I'm going to start actually using this thing it's a really nice pencil so I just thought I'd show you that just to uh, end the video on ok so I'd love to hear your thoughts on clutch pencils do you prefer them over wood case pencils are there any more benefits that I forgot to mention let me know in the comments ok I'll see you in the next one take care everybody bye for now